WYSL. The WYSL stations present an hour of truth for the battered but proud people of the Empire State. From the financial and entertainment epicenter of New York City to the sleeping and empty small cities and towns of upstate, which once bustled with manufacturing, mining, and farming. We all know from inspiration, history, and nature, we deserve a return to the success and growth of generations past, a birthright being squandered by corruption in Albany, and the depredations of an insecure, scheming mountebank posing as governor, who loathes both us and himself. As liberty beckoned to enslaved peoples behind the Iron Curtain via American broadcast after World War II, we now say, believe, rise, and join us. Welcome to Radio Free New York. Yes, Radio Free New York, where the endless vacation of Andrew Hollister rolls on. Actually, I'm just giving him a hard time because I believe that Andrew is uh, is returning to the Rochester area from his sojourn to the subcontinent and also the Caribbean. Uh, I think he's on his way back today. Hopefully, we'll be back with us uh, on his show in his regular spot on Monday. Uh, but in the meantime, you've got, uh, well, fortunately, we've got some depth on the bench here. Uh, Bob Savage uh, at the uh, control center, Bob D'Angelo in master control. And uh, we have uh, via live hookup now, Tony Terizio, who is the vice chairman of the Liberty, Libertarian Party of New York, normally headquartered in East Rochester, but now uh, broadcasting to us from Calgary up in the great white north. Uh, Tony, did I murder your back, uh, your last name too bad? Durazio, but you know what? Everybody says Durazio, especially in upstate New York. I guess there's a there's an attorney named uh, John Durazio. I keep keep getting confused with him. Okay, Durazio. I think I got it now. Durazio, Durazio. Yeah, Bob, that sounds great. Okay, sounds good. So uh, anyway, let's uh, find out a little bit about you. You're a Rochester native then? I've lived here for the past 25 years or so. Um, I moved here um, um because of a girl um that, that happens. I'm not with anymore <laughs> um, oh boy you know as as you do um when you're young and silly um i i've been active in the libertarian party for several years now i'm currently um both the state vice chair and uh the vice chair at the monroe county libertarian party i guess i'm the best uh, number two in in uh in the state uh i'm active um in the party nationally as well. And I have been spending my last several months uh, vetting candidates and talking to candidates. So if you are a New York State Libertarian candidate listening to this, you probably talk to me. All right. And if you, maybe if you'd like to be a candidate, Tony would be the guy to, to reach out to. Is that a fair thing to say? Well, at this point, next year is probably a better goal. This year, we're done with nomination. Right. Thankfully, that was... It's a very tough process. So tell us about the, the trajectory of your, uh, you know, how you landed as a libertarian. Have you always been a libertarian, or were you a member of another major political party before that? Well, believe it or not, I started off way back when, when I was a young and foolish child, as a Democrat. But in 96, um, I became, and really, it was 94, 95, I became very disenchanted with the two-party system, and the candidates that they were putting up. I mean, Bob Dole and Bill Clinton, um, Ross Perot was really just the second Republican, um, at least in my mind. So I started party shopping uh, and started looking at candidates. At the time, there was a, uh, a, a libertarian candidate named Harry Brown, who I know now is a legend. Uh, he was a bit of a radical, a bit um, a bit more anarchist than I was or even still am. But I was interested in him, so I found the uh, Libertarian Party of New York website. They had a phone number, and I gave them a call. And the rest is history, as they say. I figured say. I'd just be leaving them a voicemail, and uh, they would be um, returning my call or sending me some literature in the mail. Nope. They picked up the phone. And they talked I talked for a good solid hour and a half with a woman named Dottie Lou Brokaw, who was um, at the time the one of the vice chairs of the Libertarian Party of New York. She came inside from chopping wood <laughs> just to talk to me. Wow. 
That's a, a picturesque story. So uh, the, the libertarian role in political life in the United States uh, has, you know, the public perception is that you guys have always kind of been on the sidelines, you know, uh, just uh, just waiting for some break to, to really help you break through and, and become mainstream. Uh, tell us about um, what's what's been happening in recent elections with the Libertarian Party, particularly in New York State. Do you feel like you're gaining ground? Well, I, I, at this point, I think uh, all your listeners know that we had a huge breakthrough this year, uh, this last year, with uh, Larry Sharp and, and Andrew Hollister um, heading our ticket. Um, th- and that that's really, t- um, I'd say, give, given us a lot more attention than we've ever had in New York State. We've had a lot of trouble getting attention in New York State to begin with because we've never been a recognized party here. Well, you haven't been on the ballot, right? We haven't been on the ballot, at least not by default. We weren't one of the quote-unquote recognized parties. You'll notice that we've, we've been on the ballot almost every year um, in some some fashion. Every year that there's been a statewide race, as long as I can remember, there's been a libertarian candidate. But that's taken a lot of work, a lot of petitioning, and and it's not easy to do. Um, th- thank you, Larry and Andrew, if you're listening, for, for uh, saving us from, from that going forward. But it's been very difficult um, to recruit candidates, and we've had a couple of of really small breakthroughs. We've got somebody sitting on a water board in Fulton County, for example, um, who was a libertarian. Um, it's mostly nonpartisan offices um, where we've broken through. This year, it's completely, completely different. We're be, we were approached as a libertarian party by um, candidates, um, not only from the uh, from the two major parties, because we're a fusion state and we're going to get um, people who want as many lines as possible, line collectors. Right, right. But um, we've also got some pure candidates, some candidates who either didn't have a party affiliation and decided to run with us or were already saying, oh, we're libertarians and we'll run, we're going to now run with you because you're a party. Or in at least two cases, two candidates who have converted to from their duopoly um, registration to libertarians so we have elected libertarians in office who who converted we're talking to uh, tony Durazio. he's the vice chair of the libertarian party of new york here on radio free new york uh tony you used the term uh, fusion candidate and i know that uh, andrew's talked about this in the past i think a lot of people find that notion confusing can we talk about that for a second can you try to try to explain that to the folks sure now, in most states, you, you and New York being one of a, a small minority, I think there's four left now. Um, we're certainly the biggest um, or the most populated. Uh, you, you can be nominated and on the ballot by more than one party. So when you go to vote, you'll see that there are seven or eight lines and two names that are repeated back and forth between the lines or sometimes one name that's repeated across all sorts of lines. And in New York, that's something that's allowed. Um, in f- the most noteworthy um, case that I can think of uh, right now is in 2016, when we ran Gary Johnson as a presidential candidate, we had him on the ballot on the, on the libertarian line because we collected over 30,000 signatures to do that. But the Independence Party also had him on the ballot on their line. So he um, was running on two lines in New York state. Uh, and we have a lot of candidates who recognize that there are differences between idea uh, between the um, ideologies held by the Republicans, the Democrats, and they do recognize that the libertarians are separate, but they're trying to get our line to broaden their appeal. There are certain There are certain people, a certain class of voter who won't vote for a Democrat or won't vote for a Republican. So they try to collect as many lines as possible. And and there are a lot of candidates that are very open about this. I want your line so I can appeal to the broadest number of voters. Uh, This is something that a lot of people are opposed to. Um, It's 
I'm sorry, they're opposed to what? The, the, are, the, the way the, the ballot past, is set up? or have a ballot line. I, I, f I found it to be a strong tool. Now that we have our ballot line, I, I don't necessarily know that it's as strong a tool um, for us anymore. Um, well, let's say, let, so mechanically speaking, so somebody is uh, sitting there with a little form and they've got the Sharpie pen. Uh, if, if there isn't a line for the Libertarian Party, does that not make it, you know, psychologically, is it not more difficult for them to locate you on that ballot sheet? Bearing in mind that we have a lot of, you know, elderly folks and who find this whole process somewhat confusing after having, you know, for generations voted with the traditional mechanical voting machine. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when you don't have a ballot line, you know, you've got. Um, so the process now is is the, the ballot lines. Um, that's the, the order. Um, the win. So the top line is the Democrats because they won the gubernatorial race. Re Republicans second, conservatives third because they got the third most number of votes. Libertarian is line F, I think we're going to be. Um, I think we're the sixth one down. But we used to be war way on the bottom. Anyone who has to petition to get their to get themselves a ballot line like that are going to be put way on the bottom. So we're, it's definitely much harder to find. And in our case, um, because we, we weren't the only party to petition, they slapped us on the same line as the SAM party, who, uh, if, if you could uh, talk about two polar opposite parties, I would say it's the Sam and the Libertarian Party are pretty close to that. What, what, what is the Sam Party? I've never even heard of it. Sam stands for the Serve America movement. Um, Stephanie Miner was their candidate oh, um, okay. this year, and they also received ballot access uh -huh. um, as a result of her um, candidacy. Barely. They're going to be the last official line of the ballot, I think. Um, they're... More of a pro pro progressive, I think, is sure. probably the best way to, to describe them in the current political um, landscape. Yeah. Well, with, since it's uh, Stephanie Minor, I would think nothing else. Hey, we're talking with uh, Tony Arazio. Arazio, excuse me. I'm going to get his name uh, right before the end of this show. He he's the voice uh, vice chair of the Libertarian Party of New York. East Rochester native, uh, talking to us from Calgary. We'll be back on Radio Free New York after this break. Your business relies on computers and technology to operate. Slow, unreliable networks and servers can cause unplanned downtime and affect your bottom line. The experts at Simple Tech Innovations are here to help. Their preventative maintenance program ensures that your computers and network are kept up to date and monitored for any issues, keeping your business running smoothly. They also help clients achieve HIPAA, PCI, and New York State cybersecurity compliance to keep your network safe safe and secure. Whatever your business IT needs are, Simple Tech Innovation should be your first call. They've won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Call them today for a free consultation at 585-200-3182. That's 585-200-3182. Simple Tech Innovations. A reminder from Abate Monroe County. American bikers aim toward education. Distracted driving is dangerous, so pull over and eat. Don't try to read your mail and newspaper and stay off your cell phone. Make a mental note to be more alert, making it a habit to expect the unexpected. Remember to look twice. Save a life. Train yourself to watch for motorcycles which are harder to see. Join Abate and your family will be protected with a free $4,000 accident policy. Ride safe. Ride free. Ride often. Abate. If you ride... Ride with us. Google Update Monroe County. Your business relies on computers and technology to operate. Slow, unreliable networks and servers can cause unplanned downtime and affect your bottom line. The experts at Simple Tech Innovations are here to help. Their preventative maintenance program ensures that your computers and network are kept up to date and monitored for any issues, keeping your business running smoothly. They also help clients achieve HIPAA, PCI, and New York State cybersecurity compliance to keep your network 
it safe and secure. Whatever your business IT needs are, Simple Tech Innovation should be your first call. They've won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Call them today for a free consultation at 585-200-3182. That's 585-200-3182. Simple Tech Innovations. You're listening to Radio Free New York on the WYSL stations. And we're back on Radio Free New York for this Friday, the uh, possibly the last Friday of Andrew Hollister's vacation. Bob Savage uh, in master control here. No, master control is Bob D'Angelo. I'm in sub control. But we're all in control because we're all control freaks. Uh, And we have uh, Tony D'Orazio. Vice Chair of the Libertarian I Party. Have absolutely Ch- no Ch- control over anybody but myself. <laughs> well, I, if I were being candid, I would probably believe the same thing about me. So, comment for us, if you will, on uh, the most recent election. You know, Larry Sharp and Andrew Hollister did the yeoman service, uh, getting out there and, and talking to the folks. They campaigned and campaigned like crazy. Uh, frequent uh, uh, guests uh, on this radio station and on many others. And uh, they really, it was really just a classic you know, uh, classic uh, gubernatorial uh, uh, race. They did a great job. Comment for us on the on the outcome. How, how you felt about that? You know, um, on one hand, I'm going to look at that as a complete victory. They got us ballot access. They got us literally twice the number of votes. And, and really, if you count the absentee ballots, probably more than twice the number of votes to we've ever gotten as a party. And that is a testament to their hard work. I mean, Larry hit all 62 counties. I think uh, Andrew might have created a few extra counties and visited them. <laughs> Out of um, whole cloth, right. <laughs> you know, um, they, they did a fantastic job and they crisscrossed the state. They didn't uh, leave anybody out. Uh, I, I can't really point to a mistake that they made in their campaign. They're, it was... Their hard work that got us the exposure that we we got. However, there are some things that weren't going to be solved in one election cycle. Right. That are going to take. We're going to need. We're going to need Larry Sharp to come back, or if not Larry Sharp, a Larry Sharp type personnel who's willing to do that type of campaigning. Yeah, I, I it's, think it'd be, you'd be hard going pressed to take to... that to break through the. I don't quite want to call it a media blackout, but in most of the state it was. Yeah. In the Rochester area, um, in, in, in western New York, we did a lot better in the media than we did uh, in the eastern half of the state. Well, that stands to reason because in the eastern half of the state, of course, you have the you, know, you have the encrusted uh, uh, major political parties, Democrats, Republicans. That's their center of gravity. Uh, that's where they all hang out, and they're going to suck all the air out of the room as far as the media availability is concerned. But uh, is it your sense that Larry White, or Larry White, Larry, Larry uh, Sharp will come back for uh, for another run for governor this time around? I can only hope. Yeah. He's a great campaigner. It makes a lot of sense. He's a very appealing candidate. I think the people that uh, went and heard him speak or maybe heard him on the radio uh, felt like, uh, you know, he made a lot of sense because he did. He did. And, and on a personal note, cause, cause I've gotten to know the man personally, what you see on stage, what he's talking about, that's him that he is, he is one of the most genuine people I've ever met. Yeah. The real deal. And of course we enjoy working with Andrew here on the radio on radio free New York on a weekly basis and bringing him to, uh, uh to, to you folks. So, uh, what's, uh, what's next for the libertarian party? What's, uh, what have you got cooked up? What, uh, any rallies, any campaigns going on? Well, we've got a whole bunch of candidates across the state. Um, we're going to have approximately 250 candidates um, throughout um, all of New York State. Um, almost every county is covered. There's a few in the North Country where we couldn't find any, but um, there's only about 12 people living up there. So um it's hard in all seriousness to find candidates in sparsely populated areas but every every city um in the state has a few candidates running it's not just oh we've got a uh, token libertarian on the ballot we've got multiple 
candidates in Buffalo. We've got multiple candidates in Rochester. We've got multiple candidates in Binghamton, in Jamestown, in Utica. We even have a candidate in New York City. Wow. So how does that uh, 250 count compare with, uh, with uh, previous outings, Tony? Oh, we've never run nearly this many. Um, if we had 25 statewide, that was a lot. So this is a, it represents a, a quantum leap for you guys. Uh, comment for us, if you would, on you know a, a most recent poll. I can't uh, cite which one it was. It was a national poll that shows that now an all-time high of 40% of Americans describe themselves as independent voters. And uh, that uh, does not bode well for the two major parties, does it? You'd think it wouldn't. Um, I've, I've, I've seen polls like this before. Uh, I think it's more, I've, I've always personally thought, uh, well, first of all, I, I, of course, as a libertarian, I personally think that a lot more people are libertarian than think that they're libertarian. Um, a lot of Democrats and Republicans are, are, are libertarian, and some of them on the Republican side are openly little L libertarians, if not affiliated with our party. Not all the independent voters are going to come to us. I, I recognize that. We are the largest third party in the country, um, even if we're not um, on line three in this state. Uh, but but we're the largest in the country. So a lion's share of those independent voters are, are going to come looking to either to us or to no party affiliation, um, as opposed to another third party like the Greens or or the SAM. Uh, they're they're going to get a a sprinkling of votes. We've seen that in past, in the last several, several elections, we've been coming in third nationally pretty consistently for the last three or four cycles. Um, so we know we're the biggest and we're going to get a lot of those independent voters, but we're not going to get them all. So the, the cliche that you hear about the, the libertarian party this capital L libertarian party is uh, the, the old bugaboo electability. And, you know, this is what uh, this is the the cudgel that the mainstream political world hauls out to dismiss you or minimize you or marginalize you guys. Uh, is is there truth to that or is that just a. Uh, is that just a, a political sloganeering that you know libertarians may be great guys, but you know they're 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 just not electable? I mean, how much more electable can we find than Larry Sharp? Uh, really? <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, I've heard that too, and it's 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 on us to to dispel that myth. It's it's on the Libertarian Party to show people that someone who doesn't have an R or a D next to their name is electable. And like I said, it's going to take time on a state wide level, especially in a state that leans uh, pretty, uh, pretty far left. It's going to be difficult on a national scale. We're starting to make those inroads. Gary Johnson, for all his flaws, and I know not every libertarian loved him as a candidate, um, did convince 4 million people that he was electable. Uh, and that's not insignificant. Um, that's that's a measurable percentage of voters. He was polling as high as 10% in some polls. And that's much higher than, than even our best um, ideologue has ever um, posted uh, um, in polls. Our last three presidential candidates, um, and really two of them were Gary Johnson, but they've held elective office um, as members of re the Republican Party, but they were clearly electable. You can't tell me that by changing a letter next to their name, um, that makes them less appealing as a candidate, but that's on us to convince the American public. And it's not easy to break through that duopoly. No, no, it's certainly not, especially because all the, you know, mechanically and the rules and and uh, all the rationales behind the mechanics of, of elections, the cards really kind of stacked against the libertarians, right? Well, the R's and D's wrote those laws, um, yeah. you know, in all seriousness, both uh, nationally on the debate stage, um, they, they wrote the laws to keep the Ross Burroughs of the world off the stage. Um, because, of course, the, the perception is is that, oh, he cost uh, Republicans the election, which I don't think was true. Um, and on the local level, even 
even election inspectors in New York State have to be. Mm. Uh, hopefully, we have Republicans. The boards of election are staffed by Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, the Act. Okay, uh, we're having a little uh, uh, connectivity problem here, Anthony. It went away for just a minute. Uh, talk to me again and see if we got you back. Can you hear me? Hello. Ah, there you go. I can, can hear you just fine. Okay, yeah, for some, I don't, I don't know, know what if, happened there. if you had some other uh, device going on at the same time, but something hogged up all your bandwidth for a second. See, this is the, the, the miracle of these digital hookups. And uh, uh, by the way, if you just tuned in, Tony DeRazio, vice chair of the Libertarian Party, is talking to us from Calgary. And, you know, when the connection's great, it's great. But then suddenly it kind of like goes away. So uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just uh, check that out here. We'll go to break. And uh, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and talk to you again on Radio Free New York. Again, Tony DeRazio, our guest, as Andrew Hollister is uh, on vacation. We'll be back on this quality radio station. You're listening to the Voice of Liberty. AM 1040 Avon Rochester, FM 92.1 Rochester, FM 95.5 Spencerport, and WYSL 1040.com everywhere. Why do businesses choose to move their website from Wix and Squarespace to Simple Tech Innovations? Maybe it's their excellent customer service or attention to detail. Maybe it's their ability to give a truly customized solution. Or perhaps they just like the fact that Simple Tech is a local small business that builds great relationships with its clients. Whatever the reason may be, you can rest assured knowing that the local team at Simple Tech has your best interest in mind when building or updating your website there hands-on and love helping customers achieve their goals but don't take my word for it they've won the best in rochester eight years in a row and have an a-plus better business bureau rating if your website doesn't match your dreams or isn't achieving your goals give the professionals at simple tech innovations a call today for a consultation at 585-200-3182 that's 585-200-3182 Simple Tech Innovations. Aircraft Environmental Systems proudly supports Radio Free New York. Rochester-based leaders in climate simulation chambers for America's R&D laboratories. We're experts in troubleshooting, calibrations, custom designs, and consulting for more than 40 years. Industry pioneers, we created the first ever fleet of temperature, humidity, and altitude test chambers available to rent coast to coast. Trained and trusted by environmental chamber manufacturers, we are ACES. Find us at acesinc.com. Your business relies on computers and technology to operate. Slow, unreliable networks and servers can cause unplanned downtime and affect your bottom line. The experts at Simple Tech Innovations are here to help. Their preventative maintenance program ensures that your computers and network are kept up to date and monitored for any issues, keeping your business running smoothly. They also help clients achieve HIPAA, PCI, and New York State cybersecurity compliance to keep your network safe safe and secure. Whatever your business IT needs are, Simple Tech Innovation should be your first call. They've won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Call them today for a free consultation at 585-200-3182. That's 585-200-3182. Simple Tech Innovations. Radio Free New York on WYSL, AM 1040, FM 92.1, and FM 95.5 West. And we're back. It is Radio Free New York for this uh, Friday afternoon. And thanks so much for joining us. By uh, the, the way, make sure you, you tell the local affiliate that you're listening to in Elmira or wherever uh, that uh, you appreciate them carrying Radio Free New York. And uh, that way we'll be able to keep the program on for you. Our uh, guest on the line here is Tony Orazio from the Libertarian Party of New York, which is what you would expect since this is Andrew's show. Uh, any uh, uh, local races, uh, Tony, that, you, that you're that you mounting here in the Rochester Finger Lakes region that you want to tell the folks about? Well, um, there's a couple of candidates that I'm kind of kind of excited about. We have a lot of a lot of the races are small, uh, are small races. We have a. Um, we have a clerk down in a, a town clerk in the town of Allen, New York, 
Her name is uh, Jamie Vanderwalker. Um, she's uh, she's running unopposed as a libertarian, which is unprecedented for us. Um, we have um, a lot of of assembly races in Monroe County. Um, we have a couple of judges running Livingston County, which is where I, I know um, your studios are. Um, and it's kind of interesting how those judges came to us. Um, they, they came to us from different directions. One's a Democrat and one's a Republican, hmm, but they're both really libertarian. Um, and of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my friend Dwayne Whitmer running for Congress in the 27th Congressional District next year. Yes, he we've would be very uh, enjoyed. Upset if I didn't mention him. Enjoyed having him in the studio and chatting. Uh, for uh, yeah, 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 he's an interesting guy. He is. He's a very, very interesting guy. And uh, I have to say, I mean, among the uh, obviously I haven't met very many libertarian candidates, but the ones that I've met seem to broadly kind of fall into that category. They're kind of uh, Larry Sharp esque, you know, or Andrew Hollister uh, types. You know, I think we got a lot more when we when you put up a professional candidate, you get professional people following him. And uh, that's what we're starting to see. Excellent. So uh, what did you want? Did you want to talk about any uh, any local issues uh, today? I, I, I've not met. I have to confess to the audience. Haven't met Tony yet. The first time I've talked to him is right now during this program. Uh, because you know, but that's but that's you know, that's actually, fine with Bob, me. That, that's not entirely true. Is that right? Um, no, I was a guest on uh, Andrew's show last last summer. Oh, okay. I wonder if it was a day that I was away or something. Yeah, maybe. Um, Sometimes so some... I've actually been on it. Uh, I'm Andrew's show show before. I ran for uh, a local uh, court, uh, a, a, a um, local justice in East Rochester. Oh, wait a minute. That well. Yeah, you know something. I beg your pardon. I have met you. You were in the yeah. studio. I was in the studio that day. I guess I wasn't that memorable. I'm sorry. That's... I guess that's why I didn't win. No, it has more to do with, I think it has more to do with my age. You know, I have a little, little Biden uh, disease going on here. Hopefully a very little. Worry. You meet a lot more people than I do. So, 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 um, uh, so anyway, before we went on the air, we were talking about this, uh, you know, the, the, much is being made uh, of, uh, uh, I'm using air quotes here, gun violence now. Uh, you know, all this pressure is being brought to bear on Congress because of the unfortunate uh, multiple shootings that have taken place uh, over the summer. Um, and that's that's created a political firestorm, a real pressure point. Uh, Congress is just getting it from the gun control lobby like crazy. And uh, we have some retailers, Walmart, uh, most recently Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, they're they're doing basically meaningless gestures in an attempt to try to look like they're responding to this outrage over these shootings. I don't mean to diminish these shootings, by the way, because they're terrible. But the truth of the matter is these incidents are considerably less frequent than they used to be. And uh, it, this is really – it can only be described as alarmist, right, Tony? I, I completely agree. And I'm glad you characterized these moves as largely meaningless. A lot of people are looking at, for, let's take the Walmart um, um, ban, because that's the most right. recent. Yeah. Um, they're not, it's not a ban. They're just reducing their sales. Uh, they're, they're, they've stopped selling certain types of am, ammunition. You're not going to see guns come out of their um, stores. They've made a very small token gesture to make sure that a very small vocal population doesn't get more vocal against them. It, right. It's it's purely, uh, I hate to be so cynical, but it's purely a financial decision to um, preserve their shareholder value. Right. I mean, Walmart does not come to mind as your you know, first stop for shooting supplies, generally speaking. And so their their sales really in this in this uh, product category were were minuscule compared to their their total profit picture. And then one of the other things that they did too is they banned open carry. You know, for the general public. Well, you know, open carry is. Uh, I'm you know, glad you mentioned that. It's a, I mean, op open carry just doesn't happen except in a very few states. I, I don't have them at my fingertips, but there's not very few states where a non law enforcement person can uh, openly carry firearm. Well, um, there are some, and and none of these. So, um, Walgreens, Walgreens, CVS, Kroger, and Wegmans. So, are four chains that have kind of publicly followed um, Walmart. 
But this isn't a ban. This is them. This is them saying we respectfully ask that you don't. They're not right. saying that's you right. Can't. I for, they're, they're I, not banning. They're just I they're forgot using that. very careful language once again to make sure that they're not upsetting anybody. Yeah, the language um, that the Wegmans use. Using the um, Moms Demand Action, I think, is the group that is right. um, calling for who that are calling these chains out. Yeah, we would prefer that you not carry open carry. Is I think is the yeah. language they use. Yeah, we we prefer you not. You know, but but we're not going to ban it. And really, that's an important dis- distinction. Yeah, it is. Uh, so these are largely cosmetic, uh, you know, kinds of uh, rules to try to keep moms demand action and similar groups off their backs. Uh, I think it is somewhat opportunistic. Uh, I, you know, the, the, some of the more muscular moves that were made by Dick Sporting Goods earlier uh, are somewhat distressing, I think, to Second Amendment advocates. Uh, because it, 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 you know, what it does is it gives it the imprimatur to gun control people uh, who just want the firearms to be taken away from the general population just because they, they don't think they're a good idea. And we know the, you know, the, the progressive attitude towards anything that they like they want it to be mandatory, and anything they don't like, they want it to be banned, right? Yeah, that seems to be the attitude. But let's look at that Dick's, Dick's move. Um, they made that move, and it hurt their sales, which is, I think, why other, like Walmart, and for that matter, all the ones that have, quote-unquote, requested um, that you not open carry, are being more careful, because Dick's made... A sweeping move, um, a hardline move to uh, appeal to uh, to to the left, uh, to appeal to the anti Second Amendment crowd, and it hurt their sales, and it hurt it measurably. Yes, and there's also some backlash uh, against financial institutions who had come out previously and announced that they were not going to uh, extend credit terms or uh, you know. Uh, uh, have a credit card use for firms that that uh, produce semi-automatic uh, firearms. That's getting some backlash as well now. So, uh, I you know, people, uh, the general population in the United States likes the Bill of Rights a lot. I wouldn't be messing with the Bill of Rights. That would be my uh, uh, my advice to not not only the private sector and to big business, but also to our political leaders. Well, and and it brings up kind of an interesting point because clearly all these are all these regulations, all these moves are, are reactive, and I don't even want to think about how far down the supply chain the moms demand action are going to want to go. I don't want to give them any ideas, um, or else they're going to start going after sheet metal um, fabricators or, or something. Right. But but I I actually had you know as you mentioned um, I I'm, I'm sitting in Calgary. Now, uh, Calgary sits in Alberta. Alberta is the most conservative of the provinces, probably by far. Um, And, of course, they have stricter gun control um, in Canada than they do in the United States. So it would follow that they wouldn't have gun violence, right? Right. But that's not true. It's not true at all. Um, So what you stated... um, before Bob, that that there's a perception that there's more gun violence, and of course it's terrible that people um, would would commit such violence. I I think we need to look at root causes there, but but blaming guns, blaming the gun control laws, it doesn't follow. Um, and it was brought up to me by a Canadian, by a Canadian. Uh, so that we used to have mail order guns in uh, the United States, and we haven't since the 60s um, uh, when um, Congress passed the uh, Gun Control Act of 1968, banning um, um, mail order sales. But we didn't have we, – we had more gun violence in the 70s than we do now. Oh, yeah, by far. After that. Um, yeah. I know that – yeah. No, I mean, and, and again, you know, I, I know what the reaction is going to be. Well, yeah, try and explain that to the uh, mom of the fourteen-year-old who was who was killed down in one of these uh, mowed down in one of these uh, school shootings. Uh, I understand that, and my heart goes out to those folks. But 
you know, when, uh, when, when some guy lurches out of a bar at 1 o'clock in the morning and he's had, uh, you know, one too many whiskeys and he gets in his Cadillac and he goes out and he injures or, God forbid, kills somebody, uh, we don't propose to ban Cadillacs. We, we don't propose that, you know, Cadillacs should be, uh, we should ban the manufacture and distrib- distribution of, of Cadillacs, nor do we ban the manufacture and uh, distribution of whiskey. You, you, you're, yeah, you're, you're blaming the inanimate object is never a solution. It's ridiculous. Well, we did that once. We did ban whiskey. Yeah. And it didn't work. No, that uh, seemed to have caused a big spike in crime, as I recall. Uh, so big and uh, so so convincing that it uh, has become the stuff of legends in movies and whatnot. Anyway, uh, we are talking to Tony DeRazio of the Libertarian Party of New York. We're talking to us from Canada. We'll be back on Radio Free New York after this break. Your business relies on computers and technology to operate. Slow, unreliable networks and servers can cause unplanned downtime and affect your bottom line. The experts at Simple Tech Innovations are here to help. Their preventative maintenance program ensures that your computers and network are kept up to date and monitored for any issues, keeping your business running smoothly. They also help clients achieve HIPAA, PCI, and New York State cybersecurity compliance to keep your network safe. Safe and secure. Whatever your business IT needs are, Simple Tech Innovation should be your first call. They've won the best in Rochester eight years in a row and have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Call them today for a free consultation at 585-200-3182. That's 585-200-3182. Simple Tech Innovations. Fiorella, a family-owned farm-to-table Italian restaurant with casual atmosphere at the newly renovated Rochester Public Market. Fiorella offers wood-fired, old-world-style pizza with naturally leavened dough, house-made fresh pasta, desserts, and gelato. Enjoy craft beers, imported Italian and New York State wines. Open Wednesday through Saturday for lunch and dinner. Wednesday evenings enjoy no corkage fee. And Thursday is gnocchi night. Call 434-5705 for reservations. View the menu on the web. Rest RestaurantFiorella.com. Why do businesses choose to move their website from Wix and Squarespace to Simple Tech Innovations? Maybe it's their excellent customer service or attention to detail. Maybe it's their ability to give a truly customized solution. Or perhaps they just like the fact that Simple Tech is a local small business that builds great relationships with its clients. Whatever the reason may be, you can rest assured knowing that the local team at Simple Tech has your best interest in mind when building or updating your website there hands-on and love helping customers achieve their goals but don't take my word for it they've won the best in rochester eight years in a row and have an a-plus better business bureau rating if your website doesn't match your dreams or isn't achieving your goals give the professionals at simple tech innovations a call today for a consultation at 585-200-3182 that's 585-200-3182 simple tech innovations you're listening to Radio Free New York on the WYSL stations. We're not going to make America great again. It was never that great. We have not reached greatness. Right, 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 right. We will reach greatness. Yeah, when everybody agrees with when me. every American is fully engaged. Wow. There's uh, Andrew Cuomo, Governor Head Case, uh, offering us an engagement ring. Isn't that nice? Well, th- that, uh, of course, uh, that signals the beginning of uh, uh, something that uh, really has become a staple of uh, Andrew's show. Uh, Tony DeRazio with us. I'm Bob Savage. Uh, and uh, that's uh, talking about Governor Head Case. Yeah, my, I, I, I can never get enough of that clip. I got to tell you, it cracks me up every single time. All you have to do is hear them speak. Oh, wait a minute. Before uh, before we uh, dig into uh, Cuomo, uh, I have a text here from our uh, our dear friend John over in Honey Eye Falls. Dix is the parent company of Field & Stream. Field & Stream still sells firearms of all types. Hypocrisy in the name of virtue signaling. Right you are again, John. Yeah, wow! I did, I actually didn't didn't know they were still selling firearms. 
Field and Stream is, yeah. I yeah, forgot that they were that they were uh, corporate uh, siblings. Yeah, I forgotten that too. So, um, well, yeah, where to start yeah. with Cuomo, right? I mean, you just don't know they're, what to where to where to go you first. You don't know where to start, I, you, but you know what he's up to this week, right? Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll follow your lead. Yeah, he's uh, he um he's had a retreat with sixty of his uh, members of his inner circle um down down in uh, Oswego County at a resort that costs about two hundred bucks a night. Um, so that's you know. Ten grand a night on on the uh, taxpayers' dime. And what so, uh, what is this conspiracy all about? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, it's his in, inner circle, secret meeting, inner circle. That can't. My be, guess that is, can't be good for taxpayers in New York. My guess is that he was just staying there with his entourage during the New York State Fair. Oh, okay. Well, look, if all they're doing is having the deep fried Oreos, uh, uh, more power to them. That's great. As long as they're eating bad food and uh, and checking out the butter sculptures, they're not raising our taxes. So I'm in favor you know, of that. I, I guess not. But um, I, I can't imagine that Sandra Lee would be happy about him eating the uh, deep fried Oreos. Maybe I'm wrong. Are they still together? I thought she dumped him. I, thought, I, thought that, I don't know. Yeah, they they don't deny know. that, but I haven't but, picked up a copy of People magazine in a while, so yeah, I don't know. What, I, I don't know I, I'm not up on my Star magazine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> in touch, all that stuff. <laughs> it's okay, yeah, that's my favorite. Okay, um, so yeah. There's some buzz I've heard about the uh, license plate um, controversy about the, the the five new designs for the license plates. Yeah, I I, I love how you know how uh, Andy's always staging these contests for us. You know these Hunger yeah. Games type contests. Yeah, yeah. So you I get don't to know you get to closely. you get to pick the license plate that I'm going to force you to buy. Isn't that great? Yeah, and I'm going to force you to buy, and then make you feel bad when you complain about it. Um, well, well, I'm feeling bad because I've got like uh, I'm responsible for five vehicles, I think it is, and so I would have to replace all those plates at a cost of twenty five bucks per. And some of these license numbers are ones that we've, you know, specifically held on to through the years. There's an additional twenty dollar fee for that. So for those plates, that's forty five bucks a vehicle. Yep, exactly. And if you look at the look at the plates. Four out of five of them say Excelsior, Excelsior on the bottom in uh, in very large letters, um, which is I don't understand why he chose chose something that sounds like King Arthur's sword. Well, it's the but, state's uh, state's motto. It's you know it's on the state seal. But but we've never put it on our license plates in large type. I I, I suspect this is to promote his. Um, scholarships um you know you know the, the the free tuition that nobody's getting yeah that's one of his favorite words now he's bandying about excelsior probably because yep. that's what his head is stuffed with but uh all, but we digress all four of those plates also have the statue of liberty on them including the one that has all of new york represented all of them have the statue of liberty there's only one plate that doesn't have the statue of liberty or the word excelsior Yes, and that is, and it's the one featuring the Tappan Zee Bridge. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, uh, Tony. Let's have some respect here. It's the Governor Mario M. Cuomo Memorial Bridge. No, no, it's the Tappan Zee Bridge. You, you, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm it's with not you. Not the Governor Cuomo Bridge. Oh, as long as we're on the subject. By the way, did you know that uh, they they put up a bunch of signs down there when they when they built the new bridge. And so all the approach signs and all the, the signage that refers to the new bridge had uh, described it as the Mario Cuomo Bridge. Uh, Andy didn't like that. So now all of that signage has to be redone so that uh, at a cost of God knows how much, uh, so that the proper descriptor is the Mario, uh, uh, Mario is it M? Whatever his middle initial was. They have to have the middle initial. I think it's Mario M. Cuomo. Jeez. Yeah. That's reminiscent of uh, Andrew's um, beautiful signs that he used to have on the throughway um, that were going to cost us eleven million dollars. That that told you to look at the New York State app or the New York State website while you were driving. Right, exactly. And and the, the web address was the URL was I Heart New York. So you have all these perplexed drivers trying to find a heart on their you know wireless device keyboard. 
Jeez. I guess L still worked, but you, you wouldn't know that because the sign doesn't say L. It has a heart. Yeah. So let's let's uh, we'll, yeah let's we'll see if we can it. cause a few rear enders. You know. Yeah. Those those were those were just a dangerous boondoggle. Especially dangerous to your uh, to your wallet. What else you got there, Tony DeRazio? Um, well, you know, how much more can we can we belabor um, Cuomo? Really? Well, um, upstate, I don't think uh, I don't think you can. I don't think there's enough time to belabor him because he's no, pretty no, got pretty roundly roundly despised uh, upstate. He's definitely a political creature of downstate of the uh, five boroughs for the most part. Yeah, but he's he's well known outside outside those five five boroughs. They know him in Canada, um, and they have their own people they hate up here, and they still hate Cuomo on our behalf. Oh, really? We have we have proxy haters in Alberta. That's good to know. So so tell us, uh, yeah, what's uh, take the temperature of the uh, the political climate there in in Canada. Uh, we know that it's a left-leaning country, at least in the major metropolitan areas, like close to the border. And we all know that in Canada that uh, 70% of the population lives within 100 miles of the border. And uh, uh, an even bigger part, uh, you know, uh, around Toronto and the eastern eastern provinces. But uh, they must look at what's going on with the array of of uh, socialist candidates on the Democrat slate with with – bewilderment i would think because we certainly are well um first of all you you know we what we hear in the u.s is that they're a left-leaning country but their their leader before trudeau was um was um stephen harper who was a conservative yes um and trudeau's um approval rating right now 32 percent um which which makes trump look absolutely stellar uh there's a lot of scandal going on in the liberal side of the party so no that never happens with the political left i know but um to be fair there's a fair bit of scandal um on the right too there's a new party that's emerged up here on the people's party that um is um i don't like the sound of that a little hard right Hard right, harder right, oh. harder right than Canada is used to. This has been a country that's um, built on that really is built on people who have come here from other places, and and integration of that in Canadian culture, it, it's it's much deeper than it is in the U.S. And this co- this party is, let's say, going for a whiter Canada. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Which is, it, it is. They're not doing well. Um, but you're right about the temperature of Canadians when it comes to the American candidates. They they really don't know what to make. Who, really, it's who are these idiots and why do you have so many of them <laughs> running a year before? Their election cycles are so much shorter than ours. Right. Well, it's it's a lot of people think of Canada as kind of like an offshoot of the U.S. that basically they do everything the way we do it. And nothing can be farther from the truth. Canada is a very loose, uh, you know, confederation of what is it, thirteen provinces? And uh, yeah, I think like it's thir- I think it's thirteen. I, I could be wrong. Maybe it's sixteen. Including but, the territories. Yeah, I. I uh, but uh, the, the the federal uh, uh, government in Ottawa is really very small uh, in scale. It's uh, nowhere as near as huge and. Uh, bureaucracy ridden and all encompassing as the U S federal government is. Yeah. You can walk around the government buildings up there in Ottawa and marvel at how, how tiny they are. Yeah. Really the power is in the provincial governments. Um, I hear a lot more from the Alberta government than I do from federal. Yeah. A lot more federalism going on in Canada, which I think is a good thing. We would do well to, uh, to model our, uh, our government on, on at least that uh, proportion of power sharing. I'm not saying that we should have a parliamentary form of government like they do. Because sure. to, to tell you the truth, I'm still scratching my head. I don't know how parliaments work. <laughs> I don't know. What well, is... it, it, I've learned a little bit about that. Um, it, it's, re, it's really, I mean, if you think of it, um, ju- the, their prime minister is their head of state, but he's also 
for all intents and purposes, the Speaker of the House. Yeah. So we're going to have to leave it there, though, Tony. You know what? Uh, Before we get into more uh, Canadian politics, because we're out of time here on Radio Free New York. Give them a a, a URL they can go to. Give them a web address to get information on the Libertarian Party of New York, if you would. Come see us at LPNY.org. You'll you'll find information about our candidates, um, about how to register Libertarian. Um, and and f- one of us will probably be knocking on your door this fall to get you to vote for us. Tony DeRazio, uh, Vice Chair of the Libertarian Party here in New York. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And thank you, uh, the audience. We'll see you next time, maybe Monday with Andrew Hollister on Radio Free New York.